we just want to read verses 3 and 4, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen and amen. And then Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Now he that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Number seven, Christ spent three days and three nights in hell before he was resurrected from the dead. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We're looking at verse 39 and 40. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And that's what we got today, an evil and adulterous generation. And there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Go to chapter 28 of Matthew. 28, verse 1 and verse 6. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, okay, the first day of the week is Sunday. Okay, so if you're going to get three days and three nights out of that, if you can count without having to take your shoe off, right, where's that going to put you? Wednesday. All right, so I'm sick to death with Good Friday. Okay, if you can't count to three. <laughs> Okay, and the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Okay, verse 6, He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. I'm not going to go to each one of these. I'm just going to give them to you in Mark and Luke and John where they tell you the same thing. Mark 16, okay, verses 1 and 2, 6 and 9. Mark 16, verses 1 and 2, 6 and 9. Luke 24, verses 1 through 3 and verse 6. John 20, verse 1, 16 and 19. John 20, verse 1, 16 and 19. All those in each one of the four Gospels tells us the same thing first day of the week when they came to that sepulcher it was empty he wasn't there <laughs> number eight Jesus Christ was seen of over 500 witnesses during a 40 day period from his resurrection from the dead until his ascension into heaven okay. that would be over in Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 where we're told that. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day that he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 15, 6. 1 Corinthians 15, 6. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. How many witnesses you got to have to something? Okay, if you go to a court of law... You have two corroborating witnesses. Your case is pretty good. You got three, okay, you pretty much won your case. Five 
hundred at once. Hebrews 12, 2. Hebrews 12, 2. Okay. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's where he is right now. Okay. Now, some would stop there. But we must include <laughs> about salvation in this dispensation as being received by grace, okay, by the grace of God the Father, by all those who will exercise faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that not a, a, a fundamental of the faith? Okay. I mean, John 3.16. How about Ephesians 2, verses 7 through 9? Titus 3, 4 through 6, 2 Peter 3, 9. I'm going to run through a lot of verses because we're running down in time. If you want, I can repeat them for you. Or if you just want to get your statement of faith, <laughs> they're already there for you. <laughs> All right. There are only two ordinances for the New Testament church. Believers' baptism pictorial ordinance that illustrates our death, burial, and resurrection in Jesus Christ and the Lord's Supper, and like we'll be doing on the 21st. A memorial that is, again, a pictorial ordinance picturing the shed blood and the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ, and neither has any bearing on your salvation at all. Number 11 has to deal with the doctrinal position on the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's critical. Second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are premillennial. Premillennial meaning Jesus Christ returns literally and physically at the beginning of the millennial reign. Okay? Second Thessalonians 1.7. I want to go to these verses. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven. What does mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, when He shall come, to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Revelation 19, verses 11 through 16. Very familiar verse. 19, beginning at verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Same Word of God that was in John chapter 1. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. That's us. Gold and fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years here on this earth. Uh, go back to chapter 6 in the book of Revelation. Chapter 6, verses 14 to 17. 
in the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? It's literal, physical, going to happen. We are premillennial. You have two other groups, the postmillennialist and the amillennialist. Okay. Now, as premillennialists, not only do you believe that Jesus Christ is literally physically coming to this earth at the end of the tribulation period to rule and reign for a thousand years, but we believe because we know, because what the Bible says, that the blessed hope, the rapture, occurs before the tribulation happens. If you're a post-millennialist, you believe the church brings in the kingdom <laughs> and makes the world fit for Christ to return. Well, you're doing a lousy job of it. <laughs> oh, and by the way, they don't believe in a rapture. They think the church is going to go through the tribulation. The amillennialists, there we go, <laughs> they spiritualize the whole thing. You know, that, oh, Jesus Christ isn't coming back here ever. And no rapture either. That's because they, they don't believe number one of the fundamentals. God is, number two, that these are his words. You got to call God a liar. If that's the position you have. So don't sit here and tell me you believe God is. <laughs> the fundamentalist movement, which began in the early 20th century as a response to the growing apostasy and humanism of the times, was based on only five of those points. Number one, the belief in the inerrancy of the scriptures in their original plenary documents. Something they didn't have, have never seen, never will have, and never seen. How can you? <laughs> Number two, the deity of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the sins of humanity, and the fifth being salvation by grace through faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I grew up as a Roman Catholic, folks, and I believe the first four as a Roman Catholic. All right. Are they fundamental? You know what the problem was there? Everything else after that was considered negotiable. That's why I always look very carefully at every church's doctrinal statement. That's why ours was so exhaustive. We wanted to make sure that nobody had any misconceptions <laughs> about where we stand. No question about those things. Okay, because they're not negotiable. Really? The Great Commission? Negotiable? Missions? Negotiable? Fulfilling your place in the body of Jesus Christ, eternal security, a literal heaven, a literal hell, the inheritance of the believer, New Jerusalem? What about resisting the flesh, resisting the world, resisting the devil? Separation, holiness, gathering with the body, a prayer life, knowledge of the scriptures. Okay, Are those optional, negotiable, subjectionable? No! That was the great fault in the fundamentalist movement. And that's why it's a dead edifice today. Boy, you have people who won't get mad at me for saying that. Sorry. Uh, I've seen it. 
Do I believe in the fundament? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I believe in the fundament. But a whole lot more than what they said they believed in. Some believed in more. Others didn't. Why? It became negotiable. It's not negotiable with me. Our text from James makes it clear that belief in a fundamental, and remember, you know, it's Roman Catholic, okay? I believed in those first five. Absolutely, we were taught those. Yep. Salvation by grace through faith and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ? No, that wasn't one of them. No, salvation rested in the church, we were taught. And the taking of the sacraments. And the fulfilling of all. And even then, when you died, there was no guarantee of going to heaven. You wouldn't know until the great white throne judgment. That's not what the Bible teaches yeah, that's the problem. What's the Bible say? What does the Bible teach? Okay, so well, belief in, okay, you got people out there, oh, I'm a Christian. And they can, they'll agree with you with several of the fundamentals. Okay, but it means little. Unless it's connected to the sound doctrine for this dispensation as it was given to the Apostle Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Sound doctrine can only be obtained from the inerrant and perfectly preserved words of God. Not some plenary original, which we don't have access to. Not somebody's teachings, opinions, and preferences, or anything else. Either we have God's perfectly preserved words or we don't. Okay? You believe that there's one God. Good for you, so is Satan. Okay? All right, so that puts you on the same footing as him. That doesn't, you know, that says a lot for you, right? Where do you stand on that? Because everything else is based on what this book says not what you want to believe not what you want this to say what you want it to be how you want to read it how you want to twist it fundamentalism you know and don't get me wrong thank god for the fundamentalist movement thank god for those who stood up and stood their ground. But what happened was they said, yeah, we believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. We believe okay, in, in the Bible. We believe in the virgin birth. We, be, you know, we believe these things. And we're going to be willing to not look at our differences as long as we can find some common ground here on some of these things. Okay. But you had those who didn't believe in eternal security. You had those who didn't believe in a literal heaven and hell. You have those who didn't believe in a literal second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, who was it? We're fundamentalists. And guess what happens? Little leaven, leaven it the whole lump. And so what happens? As people keep trying to, I had a fellow send me a, you know, a, a, a message this week about uh, that kind of thing, you know, telling me what a, you know, what a mean-spirited individual I am. <laughs> I get that at, at least every couple of months, you know, you know, because he got his feelings hurt in the church one time, and you know. Uh, you know, and, and, and they, 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 they weren't, you know, uh, being nice to him and tolerant of him. He's living in sin. <laughs> That's all there is to it. You know, and, and I shouldn't be, you should, we should be able to, to overlook each other's differences and get along. <laughs> Add that right on the end there. I'm sorry. When it comes to doctrine, okay, I'm not moving. 
Now that may leave me by myself eventually, but I'm not moving, and neither should you. Neither should you. Uh, say there are so-called. You know, I've told you about a local church here. You know, supposed to be an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing. Baptist Church where they voted recently to take out of their church covenant for the prohibition of alcoholic drink. I'm done with them. <laughs> they can say anything about me they want to. Okay. Where do you think it's going to go from there? <laughs> okay. So that you can fit in get along, okay? It brings you down. It don't bring them up. Father, thank you for your word. I know it's a hated thing. I know trying to follow what I refer to as foundational doctrines, some refer to them as the fundamentals, makes you unpopular. Well, this isn't a popularity contest. Lord, you said something and we're supposed to obey it. You said something and we're supposed to believe it. You said something and we're supposed to do it. It's that simple. I'm not interested in debating with people. Now, if they want to debate with you, that's up to them. I don't debate I'm not going to entertain debate. I got no time for it. There's lost souls out there in this world who need to get saved. And then they need to leave holy, consecrated lives for you. God, I pray, lay that burden strongly 